This boy is doing more than just playing a video game. He has entered another world, a world of danger, intrigue, and magic. Retro gaming, it evokes memories of pixelated adventures, chiptune soundtracks, and joystick duels. For many of us, the go-to for this nostalgic dive has been RetroPie, traditionally hosted on a Raspberry Pi. But with the climbing prices of Raspberry Pi units, it's time we explore a fresh, cost-effective alternative. The Thing Client, with high availability, a better solution to the shortages of Raspberry Pis. Today, we'll be looking at upgrading a Thing Client storage for more nostalgia. So here we've got the HP T620 Thing Client. With its stand and those four USB ports up front, it already kind of looks like a console. Let's break down what's inside of it. And compare it to Raspberry Pi 4 Module B. While the thin client isn't new, the Pi is more than double the price. And that's without even factoring in storage or a case. When it comes down to actually running RetroPie or any emulator, based on my experience, you probably won't feel much of a difference between the two. As you can see, I'm removing the base with my hands. These thin clients are designed to allow access to the interior without the need for any tools. With that little pin on the left side, we can remove the back plate. And this green slider will unlock the side panel to get access to the interior. This is the M.2 16GB SSD we're going to replace with a 256GB SSD. Here's the MSATA slot, which we're not gonna use today. And for upgrading the RAM, you'd need to remove the bracket next to the M.2 slot. This SSD was less than $20. I've read conflicting stuff on the Mac storage for this clean client, but I've noticed that 256 isn't a problem. We need to keep this little plastic holder and screw for the other SSD to mount it with. So this SSD is a bit larger than the old one. This one is the longest it can take, which is the 2280. Now that that's done, we can close her up again and install RetroPie on it.
According to the Retropy documentation, it can be installed on Debian-based systems, therefore I've opted for Lubuntu. As I've already installed everything on the Thin client, I'm showing you this in a VM. Now we're going to install RetroPy. Let's just look up the documentation and follow the steps. It looks like we need to open up a terminal and run these commands. And now we need to choose basic install to install RetroPie. The setup is done, so let's see if it runs.